Moving on to the bass guitar. I have a UAD Apollo quad on the bottom. We've got uh, the bass DI on channel 4, sans amp on channel 3, dark glass on channel 2, and then auxiliary 1 and 2. You can see on this strip we've got some plugins. But I'm going to go through and just explain exactly the routing system that I've got because this might just inspire you to use a little bit more of your interfaces. I love UAD because we are able to print the actual plugins on the inside inserts going into Pro Tools, which is absolutely great because you can commit to tracks as you would do in the analog world. It saves CPU once you've printed stuff into Pro Tools, so you don't really have to start introducing as many plugins. And sometimes committing to the sound I think is really important because I trust your ears and keep moving forward. UAD have got a great system that works for this, but this is a formula that I've built myself and it's taken a lot of extensive routing and trial and error to get right. But it works really, really well for me, and hopefully this can inspire you to do a little bit more on the front end of your recordings rather than just putting a DI in and then having to process everything within your DAW. But what this particular system does for me, it allows me to signal flow my DI into my pedals. So I've got a Sansamp bass driver DI pedal. As you can see on the image here, these are the settings that I've got set for this particular sound. This is a great pedal, use it all the time, and that's coming into channel 3 on the UAD. And then next, we've got the dark glass on channel 2. This is the Microtubes B7K Ultra, as you can see on the screen. These are the settings. Between these two pedals, I'm creating two different flavors. The uh, Microtubes got a great top end and a really good distortion breakup, particularly in the top end. It's an all-round pedal that you could just use on its own, and it's phenomenal. There's a great band that I'm really influenced by called Carnival, and particularly their album Sound Awake is an incredible production to my ears. and I do believe that the bass player from the band uses this particular pedal quite a lot, which is great because I have one myself and I use it all the time. Between them two pedals and the DI, I'm able to craft a nice sound that works for me. Additional to that, I'm also sending the bass DI here on channel 4 to the auxiliary channels within UAD. Now we've got auxiliary 1 and auxiliary 2. Usually these are reserved for effects, so you could have one channel as a reverb and one channel as a delay, particularly for vocal vocals or something like that but I've actually come up with a formula where we can utilize these two channels as another additional couple of channels of distortion which we are going to print directly into Pro Tools. Just to explain my signal flow quickly, Bass DI is coming in on Analog 4, literally going straight in. First of all I'm actually going into a Radial J48 active direct box as you can see here on the screen. This is a great unit. It almost adds a nice sort of color to the sound but also is a really really good transformer that reduces a lot of external electrical noise. A great all-round DI box that I would highly highly recommend. So the bass is going into to that DI box and then coming out via an XLR into channel 4 of my Apollo. And on the first stage of the input we've got an SSL here series which is just coming in on the mic preamp with just a little bit of drive. We have a tiny bit of compression coming in on this as well. Not a lot at all going on. The EQ is enabled because we're rolling off up to 120 hertz, which seems quite a lot, but it just sounds right in the studio. I'm gonna go through and play all the individual tracks so you can hear them in isolation, so you can get a good picture of them. But that's basically the first stage of the bass DI coming in. And as you can see on the first hardware insert, we've got a Silverface LA-2A. Again, only just doing two to three dB of reduction in limit mode. Just to catch any peaks, the key with playing bass and tracking bass is to try and keep it really even when you're playing and not relying on too much compression. I think there's a bit of a misconception with bass and adding too much compression. For me, it loses a lot of the tone once there's a lot of compression added. And again, the insert effects are being recorded straight to Pro Tools. So as you can see, we've got the bass DI coming into microphone four, and all of these basses are actually written out of a bass bus, but I'll explain that momentarily. So then from the bass DI, if I open up the sends tab here, I'm actually sending this base DI signal. I'm coming out of my Apollo on outputs three and four, and they're going into the two pedals, the dark glass and the sans amp. And they're going there via Q3. So I'm splitting Q3 and sending it to the sans amp and to the dark glass. And then what I'm able to do is then bring the dark glass and the sans amp back into the UAD so I can capture them on their own and print the tracks separately. 
Now, sometimes people would put the pedals before the DI and commit to it that way. My philosophy with this is that if we wanted to change that in post-production, we're able to because we can then go in and mute the sans amp on a certain section if we need to or mute both of them if we need to and just have the DI. It gives a little bit more flexibility to not have to commit too much in the analog realm because we're able to capture it separately and it works really, really well. We have to go through a process of putting everything in phase, which I'll explain very shortly with a plugin called Auto Align that I use. It captures it really, really well. As I say, just gives a little bit more flexibility when it comes to the mix. So the Sans Amp is coming back into channel three of the Apollo. And again, going into an SSL E-Series, tiny little bit of reduction in the mid-range, 300 hertz. We've just got a little bit of a reduction in that area. No compression. Distortion doesn't need compression. It's already distorted. No need to compress or anything coming in. Just keep the signal as it is off the pedal. And then the same thing with the dark glass. So that's also coming back into channel two on the UAD. And that's also going to another SSL. So it's almost like we've got four channels of SSL here that we're just coming in, treating it as it would be a console. A little bit of EQ roll off, I'd say up to about 90 hertz. A little bit of a boost on the top end. Other than that, it just gets sent straight to Pro Tools. As you can see, mic line input three and two is the dark glass and sans amp. So DI is coming back in on four, sans amp is coming in on three, dark glass is coming in on two. And then additional to that, we have a little formula that I've come up with that works very, very well. On the bass DI track, we have the auxiliary sends here, auxiliary one and two. So they're obviously set at unity, which is sending the bass DI signal to these two channels. Now on the first auxiliary, we have the Culture Vulture, incredible on bass, as well as drums, as we explained in the previous tutorial. And it adds a lot of harmonic distortion Below that, we've got uh, Pultec, which we are just taking off a lot of the sub end because there was quite a lot of sub that was introduced from the plugin. So we're just rolling off up to 100 hertz with that. And then that channel then we can send to Pro Tools and we use auxiliary inputs coming back in. That would usually be in stereo, but we can just capture it in mono. So auxiliary left and right, left, mono coming back in, which allows us to print that track, which is absolutely incredibly powerful because it means that we don't need to put the plugin on and use CPU, we can actually capture it. And I've dialed in this sound and I, I use, depending on the track, I change the drive amount, but this is pretty much just set and ready to go. And I've got a bass guitar template set within the UAD. So it's just a case of plugging in and we have the sound, which is great. And then at Auxiliary 2, we have an SSL channel strip, which is actually distorting quite a lot coming in on the preamp. I'm using the preamp distortion to add a lot of this character to this channel. Again, it's a very dirty bass track, this one, intentionally, just because it's adding a lot of harmonic information. And then from that plugin, it's going into a Studa A800 tape emulation, which again is being hit pretty hard and it's being driven pretty hard, as you will hear shortly, just to create a different sound, basically. And after that, we've got another high pass filter at 100 with the Pultec. That's the routing system within the UAD sent into Pro Tools. And as you can see, they're all coming in separately, they're all labelled, and then all of those are being routed into a base auxiliary. And I'll go through the plugins once we've recorded everything in. Just to recap, we're going to put the playback engine into the shortest sample rate that we can. Mine's at 128, which works pretty well. First of all, what I'm going to do is give you an idea of the different tones that we've got coming in. So I'm just going to pick my bass guitar up one second. So I'm actually using a Fender Jazz bass guitar for this track. Very, very nice tone. It's been restrung recently, so it's got a nice tone to it. And just so you understand my routine system for being able to show you guys all the individual solos of each one, I'm actually using Q2 to send to the video recording software that I use. So if I say wanted to just show you the bass DI, I will unmute it at my end. So that's unmuted it so I can hear it in my speakers now. And then I will also unmute it in Q2 so you can hear it. And then what I will also do is press play in Pro Tools because then that mutes my talkback microphone and there's not going to be any phase introduced because it's literally muting the microphone. I'll press play on here so you can just hear the bass DI. Mm -hmm. 